G20 meeting of finance ministers and central bankers is coming next week, and exchange rate moves are front and center, driven in part by this new weak Japanese yen policy. While he has been one of the most vocal critics of the Federal Reserve and its dollar devaluation, says gold standard is the way to go. Former presidential candidate and Republican congressman from Texas, Ron Paul, joins us now on Lunch Money. And Dr. Paul, great to see you. Tell me, are we in? Thank you. Are we in a currency war? Oh, I think so, but I think it's been ongoing for decades. It's just gearing up and being a, a vicious war. But, you know, there's been competing currencies. Uh, as long as money isn't backed by anything and isn't dictated by the market, governments always compete with their currencies. They did it even under Bretton Woods. They had to suspend Bretton Woods at time to reassess it. But it was also predictable that Bretton Woods would break down and the pseudo gold standard would end, and it did. And now we're, we're in an age of competing fiat currencies, and it's a form of protectionism. Uh, under the monetary system we have today, there's, uh, you know, a, de a, a destiny where we will always have imbalances in trade and people will want to you know export more is what they want to do but that is all artificial it isn't an answer but everybody's engaged right now and for us to to be uh, accusatory against countries like China say oh boy they're weakening their right. cur currency or Japan is doing it now what, what have we been doing? Look at what the Federal Reserve is doing. And, uh, and yeah buying all this debt every month 85 billion dollars I mean it's horrendous. But Which brings us to Japan because that's the new new here and that's what's sort of stirring up this right. more vicious cycle of the Bank of Japan which to its credit though Dr. Paul has to defend itself against deflation and decades of slow growth. Well, the thing of it is, uh, under the circumstances, people say, well, we have to protect against deflation, but if what they do, uh, if they can get away with it long enough, it's going to inevitably lead to the price inflations that will come. So one of these days, people around the world are going to universally reject the currencies. It won't be like, oh, uh, Japan's overdone it, they'll all buy dollars. Maybe temporarily they'll do that, or we overdo it, and then we buy Swiss francs or something like this and get in the trade. Because this is been going on for so long, uh, what will happen is there will be a rejection of all the currencies in that we'll move into an age where people will want to buy hard assets. And I think that's already starting. You know, people say that the housing boom is back again, but maybe it might be that people are just losing confidence in, in, in uh, the paper money. So they're so, going into uh, hard assets that like we housing. can't predict. So I, I, is that, I'm curious. That, that is right, I think. Yeah. Is this the danger with all of this, I, that I, the protectionism will lead to some sort of crash of the international monetary system? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, yeah. Nothing good can come of this. You will see temporary things will happen, but uh, even if you have, uh, you know, some trade benefits from this on the short run, it usually leads to a weaker economy and higher prices. It doesn't solve the problem. The reason they do this is they will not face up to the truth. All governments spend too much money. There's too much debt. They can't pay their bills. And for years now, they've been able to just tax people and inflate away these problems. But there's always a limit to that, and that is what we're facing. We've limped along since 1971 and get in and out of recessions and now in a major recession that we really haven't recovered from. So we're at a point where all they have left is more debt, more printing money, more government, and we're nearing the end of it and they won't admit the truth because what politician will actually vote to cut something? Even the talk of cutting something in Washington right. is not a cut. It's always just slight decreases of proposed increases in a baseline budget. So they're living with their head in the sand until this whole thing comes down on us and a trade war through currency devaluations is very, very dangerous. Absolutely. And we're not anywhere near what you're talking about, deserting the fiat currency system. So now that we're here, what would you like to see out of, say, a new Treasury Secretary, Jack Lew? Do we need to go back to a strong dollar policy? <laughs> Well, we don't need to design a policy by an, an intervener. If you say he should have a strong dollar policy, that means he should intervene the markets and try to prop up the dollar and, and whatnot. You should have a strong dollar policy by defining it. We, don't, we can't even define what a dollar is. I think you should have a definition of a dollar. and It would be strong and overall long term. You know, a strong dollar is good. Why, in, why would we want to purposely devalue a currency? Our dollar is worth two cents on the dollar from 
1913 to devaluate the dollar you you hurt people you hurt savers cost of living goes up and there's no value to this if you have a strong dollar it means you can get more for your money but to deliberately devalue your dollar and have a weak dollar is so damaging to the middle class and the poor no matter how, what kind of welfare programs you have or social security beneficiaries no matter what you give them if you lose purchasing power by devaluing currencies in a trade war uh, then it cancels out all the benefits you think you're getting but do you really think that this administration and this Federal Reserve is purposely trying to devalue the dollar oh sure uh, they they would not admit that they're purposely trying to hurt people no because they they accept a different philosophy completely from uh, the sound money people and the Austrian economists uh, they believe that debt is not a big problem just listen to Paul Krugman I mean death uh, debts is not a problem right. <laughs> and you worry too much the what you have to have is spending and just print more money and everybody would spend money it would be all right but now everybody you know interest rates are so low if that were the case uh, why would why wouldn't the problems have been solved in Zimbabwe by devaluation and spending a lot of money. It leads to trouble uh, at, at different speeds for different countries. Yes, but we have learned from history that the gold standard, just to play devil's advocate here, has not immunized us from financial crisis. Well, if you look at the value of money over those many years, it proves that it does maintain money. But this is one reason why I never talk about going back to the gold standard. There were there were flaws. Uh, there was uh, you know rejection of the gold standard when times got stuffed during war, and uh, there there was a shortcoming with having bimetallism, gold and silver, fixed ratio. So there were a lot of problems. I think we understand so much more about monetary policy, but uh, and we can do a lot better. The one thing. Is is, is history shows 6,000 years of history is gold is always money and paper money always fails. Now that if, if you don't accept that and you think oh no we just have to have wiser Federal Reserve uh, Board members and we have to have a wise uh, uh, Secretary of the Treasury and we can solve all these problems through central economic planning through manipulation of money and credit I mean that's a different philosophy entirely and I totally reject it. I think free markets are what we want and we want we want interest rates uh, set by the market, not by the Federal Reserve. That's price fixing at its worst because the money and the interest rates is, right. it represents one half of every transaction. So that's central economic planning that I don't like and free market people don't like and we're convinced it does not work. All right. The end of paper currencies. Dr. Ron Paul, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>